This looks like it's seen better days. After running our first job for Danka, we've made our presence known to the crime underworld, beginning to open up new opportunities and contacts. Before continuing the main quest, I went off on a bunch of side adventures, exploring Tashara and seeing what I could buy and accomplish, including this slicer mission. We meet Isla trapped in an imperial compound. The low voices enter full of dissonant intervals before ominous swells occur. It's a really uncomfortable sound for a character that is also really uncomfortable to be around. Of course they changed the protocols on my last job. Isla, I got it. The voice is real. Good. Now I might actually make it out of here. Just need you to hitch that to the antenna on the roof. Is this gonna work? Maybe. It's Plan C. Oh, we're already at Plan C? Hey, I'm having an off day. Oh, and while you're at it, keep that ship out there in one piece. I am done with this place. I'm really impressed with how expansive this single planet is and the number of opportunities that are available to us. But when I was ready, I went back to the Trailblazer where Waka had been working tirelessly on its repairs. While working with Waka though, Alira, the Crimson Dawn contact approached. She was accompanied by woodwinds as the flute and clarinet state a fanfaric rhythm while the English horn plays melodically underneath. I couldn't really discern a theme here, and since we didn't get one the first time that we met Alira, my guess is that this is just incidental music. This looks like it's seen better days. It flies, kinda. You got another job for me? How do you feel about crossing imps? But the strings begin ominous drones as Alira mentions crossing the imps and as Waka makes a very clear reaction. How do you feel about crossing imps? <sighs> not good. Kay, tell her not good. I thought that's a no-no around here. That's why we pin it on the pikes. And how do I know Crimson Dawn won't burn me after I pull this off? You don't. But that's the game we play. And yeah, I play it better than most. You just have to sneak into an Imperial station and delete some data. Easy. In space? <laughs> no, she's not ready yet. I'll be fine. I was talking about her. But as Kay accepts the job, a new theme enters. We'll get it done. <sighs> and we're going to hear this several other times as well, and it's a very heroic theme, but isn't Kay's original theme. My guess is that Kay actually has two themes, which totally defeats the purpose of the light motif. But since we have a character that isn't really a hero, but that we need to understand as a hero, a second theme there. gives us more reflections of that heroic what? side of her. We'll get it done. And so with that, we finally get to fly the Trailblazer again. A powerful brass fanfare enters first. On its tail, the new heroic theme plays again, adding what's called a Scottish kick at the end of the first phrase. A Scottish kick is a rhythmic gesture of a short and then long at the end of a phrase. It plays before several more iterations of themes enter on the brass and strings. But as we enter space, the music becomes soft and mysterious, full of arpeggiations and soft movements with the harp. Got him. Take it easy on the controls, okay? Appreciate the ship. Uh, right. I... Next, the brass take up a chorale as we near the ship. The heroic theme enters again and modulates to another key as it proceeds. There's the ship. Blast the cargo loose. But, as pirates attack us, the music picks up in energy. 
The heroic theme can still be heard during it in several different iterations, but the percussion has become heavier now, along with the brass and several rhythmic outbursts before Williams-esque flurries take over in the strings and woodwinds. I continue to appreciate how fluidly the music transitions in and out of different feelings based on the situation. As we approached the Imperial fuel station, I was blown away by just how easy it was to get inside. And I understand that Imperials are supposed to be idiots and easily corruptible, but this was a little too much. How would anyone fall for the terrible acting job by Waka in this situation? If the narrative of dumb Imperials becomes too obvious, then it stops being believable or worthwhile. And that's what happened here, which was convenient for the writers, but disappointing to the audience. Darius G-Class freighter ran into some trouble. Had to switch to this ship for your, uh, cargo delivery. Of precious minerals. Precious, very legal minerals. Follow the tie escort into docking bay 3. Submit to inspection. As we land, the music settles with us, and we get a brief version of K's theme once more in the synth before the track fades away. As we begin to move around the fuel station, more of the general heist music starts first. But as we went a little further, we got a really great Easter egg track. While moving through the hangar, the music begins with simple dissonant swells with brass and strings before the snare drum makes an entrance as well. But then, the swells turn into a rising minor third, and if we go back to these notes in retrospect, we can hear the music from Vader's Trap from Empire Strikes Back, but in a very augmented or stretched out form. Next, the trumpets build on this further as we hear a clear rendition of this theme. And I thought this was great, and while many think that this is actually a theme for Boba Fett, this music is simply a variation on the original theme for the Empire from A New Hope. Notably, Natalie Holt used this scene to represent the Empire during Kenobi as well, and I actually like this better for the Empire than the Imperial March, since the Imperial March has really come to represent Vader as well, who deserves his own specific theme. For a while, it seemed that composers were avoiding the use of any themes that were created by Williams, even when they were perfectly appropriate for a situation. So. To hear Wilbert Roger II using this theme in such an appropriate and also imaginative way while in the Imperial Station here was both refreshing and exciting. And I'm sure we'll have another chance to hear it as we go further in this game and encounter more Imperial locations as well. Oh, the 
data vault. Okay, let's wipe some debts. As Kay finds Bosnak, he immediately offers a proposal for escape, highlighted by a brass attack followed by light string drones. From there, I'm the music sorry, stays light, but as time becomes of the essence, the light heist music returns again, increasing the energy and creating again the sense of a need for haste. They call it creative banishment. It's what I get for being so smart. All the governor's bribes, kickbacks, shady deals, they all go through me. Okay, we gotta hurry this up. Just pick who you want to pin this on. Uh, let's help each other then. Scrub some records for me and I'll get you out of here. Don't do data. Easy. That's what he needs. As we begin to help Bosnak, attacks in the strings with pizzicato enter and then echo away, keeping a hollow and exposed feeling to the scene as we feel exposed. All right, Bosnak, erase Crimson Dawn's debts on Tashara. Gordon's not gonna like that, which means I'm not it. The Dawn better be ready for what's coming. This continues until things begin to go wrong as Bosnak goes the wrong direction. The music then picks up a little more as our tension also increases. I, I pushed the button. Find me! Bosnak, you there? He runs into some troopers and we're forced to fire on them. The music picks up even more energy as the firefight gets underway, but settles again as the last trooper is taken down. More troopers race by us as the music again picks up tempo and energy with a faster underlying rhythmic track. And when I overly alerted one guard, I got to hear another rendition of the Imperial theme enter briefly before settling back down as I took care of him. But as we enter the hangar, things got out of hand quickly as an entire platoon let loose on us. The Imperial theme plays through again in excerpt. The French horn plays the first phrase before being interrupted by orchestral attacks. The low brass enter next with the second phrase and an answer to the French horns in a playful yet intense variation of the Imperial theme. Hemiola rhythms enter next along with a twisted version of Kay's heroic theme. There, the track repeats itself on loop until we make it to the Trailblazer. Fast flurries mixed with more variations of the Imperial theme enter then, continuing the danger that exists, but as we exit, the brass attempt to enter with a triumphant fanfare. Unfortunately, we're not done yet as the TIE Fighters zero in on us next. The dogfight is marked with several lyric themes in the trumpets combined with orchestral attacks and Kay's heroic theme, creating an incredible mixture of themes and orchestration masterworkings. Kay's theme cuts through before then being turned into a brief cannon in the brass before beginning its loop. And while I was disappointed in how short these tracks were before they start to loop, 
I usually only needed to hear them twice before completing an area so that they never became stale in the moment. As we return to Toshara, we're welcomed and greeted by a triumphant fanfare of Kay's heroic theme in the brass and strings before the woodwinds and strings arpeggiate into a settling down of the music. Next, a noble solo trumpet enters to herald calm as we land safely and see our hero. Nailed it. And this time, when we return to Gorak, which is what I did in this situation, the horn plays his theme once more before his theme is picked up by the strings next. That's the thing. Crimson Dawn hired me to frame you, but, but, instead, I framed them. After that, the music falls this into the same music that we heard the first time that we heard Gorak, again playing his theme throughout. And this was when I finally felt confident that this was, in fact, a theme for Gorak. So keep an upcoming eye out for it in my Star Wars theme index. I'm enjoying the music now that I'm getting to explore a little further, and I'm curious to see how Kay's multiple themes continue to interact throughout this game. But I absolutely would love to know what all of you think. I'm breaking the game down as I play it, similar to how I would watch a weekly TV show, so there are elements that may make more sense to me as I release later videos for further missions. What are your thoughts on the portrayal of the Empire in the game? And what do you think of the music for battle scenes especially? Tell me in the comments below what you think and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description where you can help support this channel for as little as $1 a month or download PDFs and MP3s of projects as I complete them along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far far away and as always may the be with you.